can I stop you here? Are you aware of the Boneyard in Alaska? I've heard of it, and it sounds fascinating. I oh, don't think he's re- re- revealed much about that well, in the public yet. Well, it's an amazing, amazing discovery. This guy's a gold miner, yeah. and he has this large piece of land in Alaska. And they're mining for gold, and they start finding like tusks and right. bones. And in one area that's only a few acres, <coughs> they found thousands and thousands of woolly mammoth bones mm-hmm. and tusks and and um, saber tooth tiger. Was it saber tooth tiger? No, it was short faced bear. Mm-hmm. They found all these like all the megafauna, many animals yeah, that weren't even supposed to exist in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Look, we have the bones of it." Yeah. And one of the things they found recently was bones that were sawed, clearly sawed. Human workmanship. But like a sophisticated mm-hmm. tool. Let mm-hmm. me see, see. See if you could pull it up so you could see how it looked. Clearly cut. Clearly Isn't sawed. that amazing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they're trying to find out what the dates on these are. That's, that was my next question. Have they de- have they dated it? They just got these recently. This is fairly recent. So I, I believe he's had some issues with uh, universities uh, not giving back his stuff and mm. selling off his stuff. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, he recently started a, a bone rush in the East River mm-hmm. They because it turns out that during the, like the – was it like the 1920s and 1930s? Stuff that they had taken from his land before he owned it, mm-hmm. they had dumped some of it because they had so much of it. They dumped it in the East River. And, you know, they were balking at it. But meanwhile, these people have found it there. Yeah. So here it goes. I think many of you are intrigued by these Ice Age bones found in the Boneyard, Alaska. If you zoom in, you'll see that it's been sanded or somehow been worked down to a smooth finish Absolutely. on the end. I'm going to carbon date one of them. I'll post the results when I do. So this is pre- three weeks ago, so it's probably going to well, take a little longer. But look how smooth it is well, on that one it's bottom. It's per- perfectly cut. And we'll, we'll look yeah. forward to, to seeing the dating results. But the fact that we're dealing with megafauna yeah. uh, that went extinct between 12,800 and 11,600 years ago uh, implies very strongly that it's at least that old. Not only that, his area has a very thick layer of carbon right. that seems to indicate some sort of a mass burn or some sort of a horrible disaster yeah. so they're they're going through these layers of things and they're finding an unbelievable amount of animal mm-hmm. that died in this area mm-hmm. just a mass die out yes and and what would cause a mass die out not human hunting right this is i'm i'm strongly opposed to what they call the overkill hypothesis this is one of the alternative explanations for why the megafauna went extinct at that time right is that hunter gatherers literally wiped out all the megafauna and to me that for a couple of reasons, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, first of all, because hunter-gatherers we know in the world today do not wipe out their prey animals. They live in coexistence with them. They live in balance with them. They don't just destroy them all. It's our kind of culture that destroys animals Right, completely. like what we did with the bison. What and, we did with the bison. Yeah. Um, and, and therefore, it seems very un-hunter-gatherer-like activity to completely destroy uh, the, the, the megafauna. And the other thing is the simultaneous extinction of large numbers of creatures that is happening very, very, very quickly suggests to me that we're looking at a disaster mm. of some sort. And that's why the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, which is solid science, although undoubtedly disputed, which suggests that multiple fragments of a disintegrating comet uh, hit the Earth 12,800 years ago. Many of them didn't hit the Earth. Many of them exploded in the sky. They were not that big, maybe 100 meters in in diameter. So they were air bursts, but they leave these characteristic signatures in the ground. And like fel- Tunguska. L- exactly like Tunguska. The, the Tunguska event is a recent example of that. 30th of June, 1908, happens to be at the peak of the Beta Taurids, and the Taurid meteor stream is identified as the likely culprit for what happened in the in the Younger Dryas. Um, wildfires burning, you get these impacts smashing into, smashing into the earth, bursting in the air over forests. They cause huge fires, and, huge, and that's why you get enormous amounts of, of charcoal mm. uh, as a result. And then the larger objects, it's thought, hit the North American ice cap and caused a very large amount of meltwater to flow into the world ocean. And that's what brought temperatures down at the beginning of the of, of the Younger Dryas. We can argue there, there are alternative theories. Maybe solar activity was involved. Robert Schock prefers a change in solar activity. And, and you know, kudos to Robert. He's a, he's a brilliant scientist, and he's put his neck on the line by advocating a much older sphinx. Any scientist these days in the field of archaeology who sticks his neck out and says that the archaeological narrative is wrong immediately gets massively attacked. And I think that's... <clears throat> I think that's most unfortunate 